We are beginning a new series for those of you who noticed the announcements. Uh, it's based on the book of Joshua, chapter 1 to chapter 8. We are dividing the <coughs> 24 chapters into three sections across the whole year. Now, some of you say, I know Joshua. Actually, if you have done your daily living water, you should know Joshua because that is in the book of, Janu in the book of January. You have not reached January yet, uh, then it's a good starter for you. Amen? Amen. Uh, but a lot of times when we say we know something in the Bible, for majority of the people, we know it just by the story that is being told. And most people, when you say, Joshua, Jericho, you know. And then the rest, something like that. Uh, there was this prostitute involved, something like that. And uh, the rest of the things, I think, they took the land. Uh. Uh, but extras, if you actually read Joshua, you know, God told Joshua at one point, you are getting old, Joshua, and there's still a lot of land to be taken. Oops. So it's, oh, I didn't know that. Yes, that's why we're going through Joshua. Amen. And why we're going to Joshua? You say, Pastor, we've done that before. Yes, if you remember my sermon, 2018, I did talk about this part oh, in the beginning. Then you say, why do we need to do that again? Well, I just want to encourage you. You know, when I was looking at this sermon, I said, do we study series? Yeah, and then... Uh, it, I remember Dr. Chiu and I text him back and say, hey, Dr. Chiu, thank you, you know, because he was saying, you know, we need to talk about Joshua. Then I say, hey, Dr. Chiu, thank you very much because that was the word that God gave me for it. And so, yeah, we're on the same page. And you say, hey, Pastor, I don't like your sermon. Then you can listen to him also. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, why is it so important? Because we have gone through a certain phase in our nation and in the world history itself and the church itself needs to cross over and if you remember my sermon cross over is a word that we use four years ago where the church needs to cross over and so today when we talk about joshua we are talking about a very interesting time when the children of israel now with a new generation standing at the edge of the river jordan looking at the promised land that god has promised to their parents to their whole nation and yet one whole generation did not go in and so it was at this point you know in the, the children of Israel under Joshua was looking and says what are we going to do this is the same test that our parents failed you know what are we going to do what will they decide what will we decide yeah and that's the question now you may say well is, is Joshua a novice no the Bible tells us that Joshua was someone an assistant of uh, sorry an assistant of uh, Moses he was someone who went into battle yep remember Moses left a lift his hand and Aaron and her held them out in the midst of the battle against the Amalekites and Joshua was the one who led the children of Israel in battle so he was someone who was like a general someone who could fight so he was not just someone who was standing you know around he was also always near the tent of meeting with Moses and if you notice that he was he actually accompanied Moses up Mount Sinai halfway he stopped to wait for Moses to return so he was actually you know very close to Moses and now when Moses has gone that whole generation Joshua you know is the one who takes over and so that's why the book is called Joshua for those of you who do not know see because I know but there are always people who are not sure so now I will give you a basic intro let's do the most important thing pray father we just thank you for today we thank you father for your word we thank you lord that it is you that speaks oh lord and so father whatever i say that is not of you just move it away whatever is of you let it hit each one of our hearts so that the things you want to say to us can come to pass and the fruitation of your word father oh lord will oh lord bring a oh lot glory to your name we commit this time to you in jesus name amen and so when we look at Joshua itself, it is a time of transition. It's a time of change. Just like us today, it's a time of change, a time of transition all over the world. And likewise in the church, you know. And, and it is something that's a, 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 a not just a phenomena in our church, but it's all over the world. You know, we recently we had a, a pastor's meeting in Subang and everybody shared the same thing. You know, it's like people are slowly coming back. People are not sure whether they are serving. Uh, you know, some churches, you know, instead of having three sound men, maybe they only have one sound man only at this moment in time. 
uh, they are not sure Sunday school is not opening up yet. You know, I just talked to my cousin who's involved in another church in KL, big church. They are Sunday school officially maybe in the middle of the year they will only kick off. Now it's like soft opening like that because they don't know who is coming. Parents not sure yet. Some haven't jabbed, some don't want to jab, you know, and some going to jab. So all these kind of things. And it is a change that has happened, whether we like it or not. And actually, uh, you know, at one point I got pretty tired about talking about the word called COVID. That's why if you see my sending out, I just call it C19. It's just a bit tiring of hearing it, right? And then, of course, the numbers are going up right now. And then some people will say, oh, I better don't come. But all these changes are transition that has happened, even for the children of Israel. Yeah, this is something that they had to deal with. And Terry Cutberg says that a lot of times, you know, Christians especially have a big problem. We have a group of Christians who, who say, hey, it's in the denial mode. Nothing changed. Lah. It's still the same. See, we come back. Right? It's the same. So they just carry on business as usual. Nothing changed. Operate it as usual. You know? And even though whatever that was done before has not produced any change or any spiritual effect or nothing in their life or around them, they just go on. Why? Because this is how we have always operated it. And that's it. And you know that in your business, if you operated it the same way as before, it doesn't work. It has happened, not that it didn't work. It could have happened. It could, could have hit a jackpot last time, but now in this instance, not necessary. Yeah? But there's one group who say, hey, no, 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 no. But there's another group what we call the hunker bunker. Sorry, let me find whether I have the picture. Yeah. Hunker in the bunker. You say, what is hunker in the bunker? There are people who say, yeah, yeah, I know got changed. Uh, you know, everywhere around us changed. Uh, nowadays, I'm biting also Shopee, Lazada. At one point, my whole neighborhood, every evening or lunchtime, you can hear people horn. And you know it's food coming. Then suddenly it increase. In between lunchtime, then you know it's Lazada and Shopee arriving. You know, to a point that the monkeys in my neighborhood were so happy. They came and steal puzzles that were left there. And one neighbor said, hey, somebody, your puzzle is being taken by the monkey. Please come and rescue your stuff. No, the monkey is tearing it right now. So it's like, it's a new thing. During our time, we don't order anything online. You know, but it is a norm if we don't do it. And so there's this group of people who hunker in the monkey who say, hey, hey, yes, yeah, change has happened. But what this hunker in the monkey group do is they only recognize the negative part. All this change is going to bring things terrible. You know, it's going to bring all those changes. It's going to bring things that bring negative impact on the work of God. So let's just maintain things as it is. You know, the world is a sinful place. Let's just hunker in a bunker. You know, this picture here is not a house. No? It's actually a bunker. So if you ever want to build a bunker in US and make it look nice like your house, this is one of the design. We go there, man, it looks nice. Exactly like my house or aircon, everything. We can hike here. And that's where a lot of times you look at church history, Monastery and common come about. Have you thought about it? You know why people build monastery so high up? So the rest of the world, very malas to climb up all the way. Today we climb up because it's a tourist site. Yeah? You pay money, go tour there, or go and visit the monastery and say, wow. But if it's you were living that time, you think you're going to climb up there? No. Why do you put it so far and so deep? So that the world is a sinful world. We are not going to stay there. Let's go away. Let's hunker in the bunker. That's it. Not the contemplating thing, God is bad. But let's stay the same. Let's maintain the same. But there's another group who say, yes, changes is happening. We got to hoist the sail and follow the wind of the Spirit. And these are three responses that we can have. Terry Cutberg says, which one are we? You know, do we are in denial mode? Let's just operate as it is. Or hunger in the market, let's just stay the same, you know, change is going bad. Let's just keep away. Let's not change anything. Let's just hunker in the market. Let's stay within our own four walls. Everything looks nice, everything looks good. Say the amen nicely. Or do we hoist the sails? So when we look at this, we look at the question here is this what was Joshua and the children of Israel willing, you know, to give up to enter the promised land? I mean if you stayed somewhere in the wilderness 40 years, you're pretty used to the scenario, right? 
Every day when you wake up, you see sand. Please, get used to it. In fact, some people might like it. You know, you see sand every day. I mean, after a while, after 40 years, you're pretty comfortable. You probably could name all the animals and insects that walk around the desert. That's your life. Yep. You know how to handle it. I'm sure some probably think, why do we need to cross? After all, our parents didn't cross. Anyway, God still blesses, right? Have you ever asked a question? A lot of times Christians mix it up. I always ask this question. Where was a place where the children of Israel had clothes that never, they, they didn't need to go to the supermarket to buy clothes? Their clothes grew with them. Their shoes never worn out. Even now, their shoes uh, wear one year, koya already. Yeah, but their shoes never changed. In fact, they grew with them. Clothes also grew with them. Well, just imagine that. I always thought about underpants and all that, how it works. Yeah, but back then, it's a different thing. Uh. But think about all those things. Changes. You know, they, all those things, God bless them. They had food that dropped every day. Of course, it's the same kind of food, but the food that could be cooked in marvelous different ways. And if Darren was a chef, he'd probably write a book, A Thousand Ways to Cook Manna. Yeah. But think about those things. This was the blessing of God. But all those blessings, you hit the rock, water come up, manna drop down from heaven. Miracles daily, man. Do you see manna drop from heaven every morning when you open out the window? Haze and uh, dust. But these are things that happen. And a lot of Christians say, wow, that is wonderful. But where did it happen? In the wilderness. And a lot of Christians say, well, I'm blessed, what? My children are doing good, what? So God must love me so much. Yes, you are blessed because God loves you. doesn't mean what we do in our lifestyle is right before Him. He loves you. He bless you because you're children. You are parents. You know, just because your children are naughty, at least you are no ampao. You see, give ma. Or you add in one word, ah, Elsa, ampao. Grow up and behave yourself. Right not? But you still do. But a lot of the time we mix up and say, oh, well, I'm blessed. So I must be okay. My spiritual life must be good. I think we all are people who can think and we are sober to really know where we are in our walk with God. I'm going to stand here and say, am I 100% right? Or no. Do I make mistakes and sin? Yes. You say, Pastor, you do. I, you, my wife can tell me, hey, when you drive, don't point your hands. Don't tell me none of you point your hands. Get out of your abundance of your heart. Your hand moves, ma. Correct, not? Just come out early. Come to church this morning. Why, you, why did uncle drive so slow? I really late for church. Right. I'm saying, no, ma, I'm just telling him. Any. But you tell it in what kind of spirit? Right, not? We all know. Yeah? So that is the challenge that we all face. And so that's where my sermon is today. It's entitled, From Here. To that. Simple, right? Joshua and the children should stand on this side of the river. From here, how do we go there? What does it take from here to go there? Amen? Uh, I'm going to look at the... I know we seldom read the Word of God. And I know it's pretty long, so I won't ask you to stand up like some church do. So let's just quickly read it. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses ate. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong, courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the left, right or left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Yep. Three days from now, 
you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. But to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you after he said, The Lord your God will give you rest by giving you this land. Your wives, your children, your livestock may stay in the land that Moses gave you east of the Jordan. This two and a half tribes did not cross the Jordan. They stayed on this side. Whatever the reason is, they didn't want to go in the promised land. Okay? Then they, then they answered, sorry, east of the Jordan. Then they answered Joshua, whatever you have commanded us, we will do. Wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we have fully obeyed. Okay. Just as we have fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whatever you may command them will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Okay, we have finished the whole passage. Now what, what, what will really take the children of Israel to cross from here to there? That is something that we can learn. Now you say, Pastor, you know, you're talking always going forward. Yeah. Uh, as Christians, we're talking about going forward. But in the book of Joshua, the great thing is it talks a lot of many other stuff. It talks about dealing with sin. It talks about you know, dealing with giants. It talks about showing grace and mercy. And, and there are things that are so important because as we move from here to there in our spiritual walk, individually and corporately as a people, yeah, as we look at Joshua, there are lessons that we pick up in showing grace, showing mercy, dealing with sin, and how we need to move forward in the things that God has. If you look at Joshua itself, the story opens up. It talks about the transition from old to new. Yep. Sorry. And it starts with the opening of sad and bad news that Moses, my servant, is dead. Yep. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord said to Joshua, my servant is dead. Now, this is a very big deal to the children of Israel. To announce Moses is dead is a big deal. Why? Because he's that guy, he's that hero, poster boy. If you are young, say, Moses is the man. He's the guy who went. He's the guy who told us about the burning bush experience. He's the guy who confronted Pharaoh. He's the guy who did mighty works before the Pharaoh and his magicians. He was the one who met God on Mount Sinai, took the Ten Commandments. He was the one who led the people through the wilderness, stayed true, and brought us right now to where we are. And Moses is dead. What do we do? Do we go back to Egypt? Do we stay put in the wilderness? These are questions that run through. Of course, the Bible doesn't say it, but if you were there, you probably thought about it. If you look up to Moses as a man, and now God says, Moses is dead. Finish. The whole generation who was supposed to go in with Moses did not go in except for Joshua and Caleb. Why? Because out of the 12 spies that we know the story, that went in, wrecky the whole promised land, came back with good report how the durian there so big, no thorns, you know, the graves all so big and all that. But the 10 spies says, it is big because uh, the people there are big, you know. That's why it has to be big la, to feed them. You know, la, I paraphrase it. Yep. The giants are so big, you know. Yes, the fruits are big, but the people there are also big. Therefore, we are small. That's why our children are small. We cannot fight them. There's no way we can fight them. And everybody say, oh, like that cannot. Lah. Should die one. How you know? Hey, this ten fella, this is my cell leader, man. He said, cannot, ma. I'm not talking about you. Eh. I think I'm putting in paraphrasing today. This is my disciple. He said, cannot, what? He went there and see with his eyes. No, with his eyes. He even took picture, you see, huh? Big, no? So big that you cannot see picture clearly also, right? Because the head covered the whole face. Cannot see, really. No? Then Joshua and Caleb say, hey, no, 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 there's no way. We can take the land. Why? Because God said he has given us the land. Sure, they are big, but God is bigger. And the other ten say, don't listen to these two jokers. La. They all ate too much uh, curry this morning. There's no way it can be done. And so the children of Israel did not listen to this too. One whole generation missed the blessing of God or the promised land, including Moses. So how do we move? Do we stay put where we were pre-COVID, BC, remember? Before COVID. 
or do we AC, no aircon, after COVID? What do we do as a church? It's not just about high praise. It's about the church in Malaysia. What do we do? How do we move from here to there? We stand on the edge of the Jordan. What do we do? The first thing that Joshua and his people needed to do was to let go of the past. You say, ah, that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very important. It is time to let go of the past. In other words, yeah, the past was great. Nothing wrong to talk about the past, remember the past, remember the faithfulness of God in the past. How God did this, how God did that. It's great. It is always good to remember why it builds faith. Yeah? It is so important to do that. That is the positive thing about talking about the past. But we cannot live in the past because if we live in the past, we will miss the future that God has. Then it becomes redundant to say that He is a way maker. It is better to stay, say that He is the call, the stay maker. You know, my God, He calls us to stay, stay, stay. You know, but He is the way maker. Where is He making the way to? He's making a way for us to stay. No, He's making a way for you to move. Yea, though I walk through the valley. It's always that. When you go through the water, when you go, it's always go through. It never, when you stay in the valley of the shadow, they don't have one. But that's where a lot of people do. We stay in the past. Yeah. It's okay to miss the past, but never miss the future because we're living in the past. And that's the sad thing. That's why, remember, the children of Israel had an issue during Moses' time. They suddenly remember how Egypt was great. How Egypt was wonderful. The Cha Kui Tiao there was better. You know, got Siham, got all these kind of things. Compared to now, what? Oh, yo, look at the noodles now, terrible. Don't have. Watermelons there was nice. Yeah, the cucumber was nice, cooling. Yeah, all those things. Ice kacang, everything better. In the desert, got nothing. Every day is sandwich. You know, there's nothing. They wanted to go back to Egypt. You remember the story? They wanted to go back. Living in the past is the dangerous thing. And so there's a principle here for us to remember, just like Joshua did. They cannot go back anymore. They know what is behind them. Because Egypt is too far back, and in the wilderness uh, is the cemetery of all their parents. What's that? You can't go back. But you cannot also stay here forever. It's not like ten fellows, you know, by the rivers can build settlement in millions of people. Yep. The only way is forward. The only way is forward. And so that is the important thing we have to ask ourselves. We all got a choice. Do we want to move forward? Or do we want to just stay put? Hunker in the bunker? Or we say, no, 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 no. let's just go back to the past. And so that's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Joshua and the people decided, hey, we got to let go of the past. As great as it was, yeah, we got to move past it. Okay? It's okay to miss the past, as I say. Don't miss the future because you're living in the past. And so what we're going to say to the past, eh? thank you for all the lessons, but future, here I am. I'm ready. And that's why Paul would say this scripture we all know. One thing I do, forgetting those things which are you know, behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I reach forward to those things which I hate. I press towards the goal for the price of the outward call of God in Christ Jesus. Can you memorize this scripture as a believer? Put it there and every day you pray. Say, God, I make a choice today. Forgetting those things which are behind. Whatever hurts, whatever pains, whatever situations I have gone through before COVID, I want to bury it and kill it and settle it and let it be done. Never bury any situation alive. If you have issues with people or that, settle it, bury it in dead and bury it. If you bury anything alive, it will come out like zombies next time. It will come and haunt you. You say, Lord, it is done with. Now, Lord, I pray, help me, guide me, lead me to move forward, to press towards the goal that you've given to me. Can you do that? You memorize it, pray and say, daily, Lord, I pray that for myself. I pray that for my children. I pray that for my household. I pray that for my connect group that we will move from those things and move from here, from the past, to the things that you have. 
Otherwise, we can't say, mighty things will you do? Greater things will you do? But those are in the past. Remember, we are called to serve the current and the next generation. We cannot serve the previous generations. Do you catch what I'm saying? We cannot serve previous generations. Say, why? Because they are dead. It is finished. Whatever that worked before, worked before. We have to move on. And that's why, you know, the enemy will always try to stop us from moving from here to there. He wants to hold you back and keep you stuck from the past, in the past strength, past faith, past glory. You know, you can never reach what's in front of you until you let go of what's behind of you. And so the second thing is this. We need to get ready to move forward. That's why the call to Joshua was this. Now my servant is that you and your people get ready to cross the river into the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. And that is so important. You see? God says to, Mo- to Joshua, Moses is dead. I have buried him. You don't even need to bury him. I did the job for you. Yeah. One of the greatest things, a lot of us might say, hey, Moses didn't get anything from God. How many of you were buried by God? <laughs> yeah. Moses is buried by God. No one knows where he's buried. But God knows. And so Joshua gets the command, marching orders. God says, Joshua, this is my command to you. Get the people ready. Get them up. Get them ready. Whatever they need to do, get ready. In three days' time, you need to move. You need to move. Now, they got a choice whether they want to stay put or not. But God is saying, next generation, next man up. Let's move. God's workers die, but God's works goes on. Moses is dead. Hello, Joshua. Now, there will be some Christian, hey, pastor, that's why lah, we get the young people to do the old, the young, the old one. You know the word is dead. So if you are breathing here, not time yet lah. Hello? Yeah. Must be applicable, right? You not say retire, you know. Say Moses is retired. No. Moses is dead. Yeah? Still, you do amazing grace for me and I do for you. We are still called to do and cross. And Joshua and Caleb by then was nearly 80 plus of it, standing by the river because they were people, when they went into Recky, it was about 35 to 40. Yeah, we are, do not know exactly we are you know, estimating because back in those days, they didn't keep birth cert. Okay, so we are estimating. So by that age, he's nearly about 75 to 80. Okay, and he died around 110. Okay, so the question for the new generation is this. In the previous generation, I, I love it for our church. There was one whole group of people who helped start the church in the beginning. Yeah, they're no longer here. Either they moved on, and they passed away. Likewise, and others, another group came in to help us get this building. And they supported us too. And some of them are no longer here. Yeah, they're serving other places. Some of them have passed away. Praise God. And now you are the next generation to carry on this next, to the next. And it's so important. Every generation needs to do what God has called them to do. But the same question we have to ask ourselves, just like Joshua, can we trust God, of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, just like Moses and our parents did? Can we trust God who brought us out of Egypt into the wilderness and now right here at age? Same thing. Can we trust God who helped us start the church 20 years ago, have helped us to get this building? Can we trust God in the future? That's the same question every generation has to ask. Amen? Can we trust God in this new situation? Can we trust God right now after post-COVID? Can we trust God? What's going to happen? Do we know who is here? Do we not know who is here? These are questions we have to ask on one thing that counts. Can we trust God? Because ultimately, if we keep declaring it is God that builds, then God is the one that establishes. Amen? And in, 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 in opportunities, this is so important. We, we need to understand. I, I'm not sure whether you can see it. Opportunities that God will open up. With opportunities, likewise, will come enemies. They go hand in hand. Yep. That's why Paul would say this. I said last year, for a wide door for effective work has opened to me. And just like the open door opens up, there are many adversaries. There are many adversaries. Bob Jones Sr. says this, for the door of opportunity swings on the hinges of opposition. 
the doors of opportunity swings on the hinges of opposition. So where there are opportunities, there will be oppositions. But if we only focus on the oppositions, we can never move on. Will there be oppositions? If you read Joshua ahead, you know there are giants. You know there are big cities. You know there are enemies. There are people who are staying there who's not going to give your, their house to you. Hello? There are. And so the thing is this. You can stay where you are, Joshua, but the action is somewhere else. You can stay where you are, but the miracles start at the Jordan River. You can stay where you are, but God is calling you to move forward. Amen? That's the call, moving forward in faith. Thirdly, firstly, let go of the past. Secondly, get ready to move. Number three, believe and appropriate the promise of God. Believe and appropriate the promise of God. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. This is very important. Yep. As Christians, we need to believe that promise. Yep. This scripture is actually basically the same. When Jesus says, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, you know, there's one line that a lot of Christians miss in that verse. He says, Lo, I am with you always. It is the same thing. God says, You know, you are not going in by yourself. When you go and make disciples, when you teach, when you baptize them, you are not going by yourself. I am with you. Likewise, just as I was with Moses. Likewise, I will be with you, Joshua. So it's not going to be their one man show their own strength. It has to be God Himself. For us Christians, we live on the promises of God. If we are going to serve God, we need to learn to trust God and the promises that God has made. Because when we live in this world, obviously we will run into the dangers, we will run into oppositions, and it can hinder us from living according to His promises. Yeah, one of the greatest enemy of hope is when Christians forget God's promises. Very important. John Piper says this, one of the great enemies of hope is forgetting God's promises. Can Christians forget God's promises? Yes. When things become so overwhelming that we cannot see what's going to happen, we lose hope because we forget the promises of God. See, the promises of God for tomorrow are the anchor for believers today. And that is so important. So important. The promises of God. Let's say, take it for example, a simple promise. And it dictates how we respond to God. The Bible says this, for when two or three are gathered in my name, what happens? Sorry? He is here. God is here when two or three are gathered in his name. Are we gathered in his name? Are there more than two or three of us? Do you believe he's here? Then do you sing like he is here? Do you respond to his word like he is here? Do you give like he is here? You say, ah, Pastor, that one different. What part of the scripture works for you? If we believe, we've got to appropriate it. It's not when you say, oh, I name and claim it. Hey, Pastor, we don't name and claim. No, we don't name and claim. If the scripture says God is here, it doesn't go with, oh, today Mac is singing my song, Waymaker. When he sing Waymaker, my hand will. But he sing the rest of the song, I don't know. Like that, lah. Oh, Waymaker is up. Yeah. Oh, no Waymaker. Hey, what kind of song sing? It doesn't go with that. But God is here. God is here, then why only happens with Waymaker? The rest of the song? Oh, I don't know. So God should know. Lah. He, I don't know, so I won't sing. Really? But you don't know, so never mind. Your heart, what does it come out? Uh, Mac. Uh, uh, sing the song, I don't know. Sing. I don't sing. But God is here. And the MC comes up, God is good! Everybody says, all the time. But is it really good for you or not? No, la, the first part of worship, I didn't like it, so it wasn't good for me all the time. And then when they say offering, uh, offering again. No, it's good. Sermon, here again, 30 minutes already. 
how the person know 30 minutes? Because Pastor Curry is holding the number there. <laughs> That's her job, okay? Just to remind me to talk faster. Okay? And that's why the scripture tells us, we don't have time, Joshua 1 got a lot of things, so that's why the scripture says, you need to know the word of God. Because Christians, we need to know the promises of God and appropriate. That's why you need to know what the God says. Joshua, you need to know the word of God. Meditate on it day and night. For us to do daily living, morning and evening, some of us night, some of us, we are three months behind. But the scripture says here to Joshua, day and night, meditate on it. Meditate on it so that you'll be careful to do all that is written on it. How? If you don't know the Word of God, you cannot do it. But because you know the Word of God, you can do it. And Joshua, you need to know the Word of God. Why? People look at you. And Joshua, what is God doing? And what is God wanting us to do? And what is God saying? Uh, God say, Kong si fachai. You know? What do we do? We need to know the Word of God. Your prosperity, your success in life when we say prosperity, success, this one where people twist the scripture and say, oh, that means uh, God will bless me. So I know the scripture so that God will bless me multifold. That is such a wrong understanding. That's why it doesn't work. Because I ask you to be successful in following me. You know, Blessing comes because I love you. But when you twist it with the intention, I memorize the scripture so that God will bless me. It's a wrong way of understanding. Okay, fourth, just to encourage you, this is the second last point. Yeah. So remember this. God's word is a map who, of who we are called and what we are called to do. So, fourthly, firstly, let go of the past. Two, let's get moving forward. Three, believe and appropriate the promise of God. We need to. Fourthly, choose the long road of obedience. You say, why is a long road? Obedience is a long road. It's a forever journey. We follow God for the rest of our lives. Yeah? Christians make one decision for their entire life. It's when they get married. But they make one call for the rest of eternity. That is their Lord and Savior. And that's so important. And so it is a long journey of obedience. Yeah? John Maxwell said this once, that there are some Christians who are educated beyond their obedience. Let me say it one more time. John Maxwell said this good thing I didn't say. He said, there are some Christians who have been more educated than their obedience. In other words, we know so much, but we actually don't do it. Yeah. So we talk about it. We talk life right center about it. We come to church, we look, but we actually don't choose the long road of obedience. Bible says this, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commands, obey what I command. Because obedience is that key that unlocks the promises of God. It doesn't happen, you see. If we stand here and the promises say, two or three gathered, God is here. They say, where are you, God? And God says, you obey, la, you believe it. And the bridge to fruitation of that promise is you must walk the bridge of obedience. He says, you must forgive. But Lord, he also don't want to talk to me. You must walk that and go in obedience and love that person and forgive. See, that bridge is called obedience. So there are a lot of people who, who desire to God to do something in their life and they hope that it will be a delight. But there's one thing called that bridge, discipline, which requires obedience to happen. A lot of Christians don't, don't do that. But we do that in every aspect of our lives. Yep. We tell our children, hey, you want to be a master student, huh? then you go put in the time and put in the work, huh? and that's called discipline. Huh? Right? We do that. If you say, hey, if you want your business to grow, huh, then you must do this, huh? put in the effort, put in the time. We all do that. If you want to lose weight or you want to get buff up or you want to be fit, you must put in the time. Correct? This discipline, the obedience to the, the, the structure and regime that you want to put. But we know every aspect of that in the general aspect of our lives. But when it comes to spirituality, we tend to put it on one side. And that is said. Yep. Fulfilling God's promises requires us to walk by faith. Walk by faith. So that is so important. Obedience is a call that I cannot force you into, your parents cannot force you into, your wife, your husband cannot force you into. It is a choice that we make. 
Joshua and the children of Israel stands at the age that they have to choose whether they want to obey God's call to cross. You mean they have a choice? Oh, of course they had a choice. Their parents had a choice. They didn't want to go in. So they died this side of the Jordan. That's all. There's two and a half tribes there who don't want to go in. Joshua says then, okay, fine, you don't want to go in. Moses already agreed with you. But you know what? You still have to help everybody else get the land. And so all your fighting men still have to join us to go in. Why? Very important principle there, right? When you go to war, Jesus says, you must be able to know who is your army. Count the people that you have. Joshua needed to know that all the 12 tribes, regardless of those going and those who didn't want to go, your army, your men is all there so that we need to know how many to fight that war. And that's so important. We cannot cross in the future and like, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know half the, the people want to go or don't want to go. And this is difficult. Difficult. Yeah? And so that's the challenge. Choose the long road of obedience because God wants to bring maturity in many of our lives. And this is a great season because in the transition and change that has happened, our God remains that anchor. His promises are still sure and amen in Christ. The quest challenge is for us to obey. Hold on to Jesus Christ. Amen? So the last point is this. Every level of your life will demand a different you. Every level of your life will demand a different you. We know that in a normal living, when it comes to spiritual life, we tend to like shut off and say, well, I didn't know. Yeah, because if you were to go to university, you cannot act like kindergarten, right? Yeah, and when you go out to work, you cannot act like you are in university. Because obviously your boss will say, ah, this fellow is still young, right? immature. And when you get married, you cannot act like you are still single. Correct or not, married couples? <laughs> if your husband and your wife still act like single, they are married, you've got a big problem. Every level of life demands a new you. And likewise in spiritual life, new level, as I said before, new level, new devils. It demands a new you. Yeah. And that's why God keeps saying this. I'm oh, sorry. God keeps saying this. Three times He tells Joshua, be strong and of good courage because you will lead these people to inherit the land I promise to give to your ancestors. Be strong and courageous and obey all the law my Moses servant has given you. Don't turn to the left or right. Obey. Meditate on the word of God. Keep the word of God before you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid for I will be with you wherever you go. Three times. As I say in the beginning, was Joshua someone who is easily afraid? No, he fought battles. He went in the promised land, came back and stood against the other 10 spies and said, no, we can take the land. He was someone who knew what courage and strength means. You see, courage doesn't mean uh, um, no fear. We all know what fear is. Fear exists. Whether it's something new that we're going to walk into, you know, or something that's challenging us. Okay, courage basically means the mastery of fear that boldness to master that fear that will come. <clears throat> Knowing that it is not you, but God that fights the battle for you. So it's a mindset. In other words, when you face those situations, you're going there with a mentality that says, I have won the battle. You say, how come you know that? Because my God is with me. And He is the one who has won the battle. It is a mindset. You say, where got such thing one? If there's a negative mindset, oh, yo, I go die already, die already, die already. And that exists all over the world. That's why, you know, people go to see psychiatrists and psychologists. Then what about the other part of God's part? When you go with a mindset that I have won the victory because God is before me. It is a different thing. And so when Joshua goes in, it's a different mindset. God tells Joshua, you need to be strong and courageous. Not that because it's weak, but because in this new season, walking into a new place, it requires a new him. It requires a new way of dealing with things. It requires a new Joshua. Their old Joshua defeated the Amalekites. Their old Joshua led 
you know, was there with Moses. The old Joshua did many things, but that was the past. Now a new Joshua needs to arise. Once again, embrace God's strength for a new day, for a new venture. And that's so important. And every juncture in your life, every part of your journey, God wants to do that. God's want to, God wants to do that. And so it's a reminder for us, when we let go of the past, we are free to pursue God's vision for our future. Very important. When we lead, and when we follow with courage, others will follow example. Because if we lead and we follow with fear, faith does not exist in the body of Christ. When we dare to trust and obey God, miracles begin to happen. This is so important as I close. It's close already, huh? really. We look at this picture here. On this side is the wilderness. On this side is the next. And it's so important for us to take hold of this. Because if we don't cross forward, we move forward in things that God tells us, then every prophecy that God tells us will not come to pass. See, the promises of God may be given to some of you during prayer, seminars, church camp. It's, it might come from the past, but it's always meant for the future. Do you know that? You know, someone may say, you know, Elsa, I see you, you will be an evangelist in the camp five years ago. And the last five years, nothing happened. Some more COVID, some more stay at home. And then in this new season, God starts to open door. Then you realize, hey, the promise is not that. The promise is for something in the future. But if you don't embrace it, you will never walk into the things that God has for you. And there are many Christians who kept stuck in the past. And it is a wilderness. They never grow up. That's why I say, whether we, we, we talk negatively about one's, uh, you know, one safe, you know, always say, ah, I don't know, these people. Uh, a lot of Christians act believing that. We don't make any change in our walk. We are stagnated in our walk. And somehow we believe it's pretty okay with God. Because after all, if you don't say it, one say, hey, it's okay, right? But we make a lot of noise about you, you know. Who are these fellas? Huh? Who are these Kelvin? Oh, yo, yo, I see them. Oh, yo, oh, yo. But our walk never grow. Because inside our mind, we think pretty okay. One say, okay, man. Pastor got my church membership, what? He drowned me 10 years ago. Yeah? So, it's still valid, right? God should see, ma. God can see, ma. You know, I bring my baptism, so see God? Uh, 10 years ago. And don't come to church, it's a secondary thing. So, don't hype about one say, always save. Because you believe it. In your actions. You see, what's a big deal if you don't cross the world? You kill the next generation. If the present do not cross, then we lay what we always say, the important principle. The ceiling of the current generation is the floor of the next generation. So if the ceiling of this generation is let's stay put in the wilderness, Let's deny, let's hunker in the bunker. Then the next generation can only build on the hunkering and the denial. And that's the challenge we face for a new generation. You know, Isaac Newton says this. Can you read it? I have seen further, it is by standing on shoulders of giants. Joshua and the people had to cross so that others will come after them, stand on your shoulders and say, as God did before, He can do it again. And that's why Hebrews tells us when you run the race, there are witnesses before you cheering. Those witnesses are there. They're gone before you. They are cheering. You are running that power of faith standing on the shoulders of giants who have gone before you. Whether you read about them in the books, whether they were people you followed through, people who paced with you, but they were giants in which you climb on your shoulders and say, yes, I see the promised land. I see the vision of God. I see it can be done. And so God's reminding us today, hey, let go of the past. Great thing about Malaysians and for us, we have 
a second time to restart New Year. Yeah, January 1st resolution didn't pass, cannot lose weight. Now Chinese year can start again. Lah. Yeah. Yeah. After eating all your happy habits. Ready to move forward. Believe and appropriate God's promise. We got to. I share that, right? So next week when you come, God is in the house. Sing you. Wow. Give you woo. Pay attention to the word. Wow. Say amen. There's some people say, hey, say amen. Funny lah. Why say amen? Funny. Nothing wrong with saying amen, right? If you agree to the word, say amen. You know? Do that. Because God is in the house. Yep. Choose a long road of obedience. Because the word of God tells you to give calls for you to go. Follow him. And remember, a new level requires a new you. It requires a new you. The past is gone. It requires a new you. Let's pray. Father, forgive us, Lord, when we get caught up with, Lord, I already know. Lah. Father, whatever we know, Father, it was in the past. And Lord, new things you will do. Not that, Lord, Father, your message changed. What really matters has not changed. Your gospel has not changed. Your message has not changed. You have not changed. What counts has not changed. But the ways, the movement, the stuff that is being done has changed. And Lord, you want to show the greater things you want to do in our lives and through our lives, just like Joshua. Lord, no longer will they be, oh Lord, receiving manna when they cross to the promised land. The food will not be dropping from heaven. Food instead will be grown on the ground. Oh Lord. Waters, oh Lord, will be, oh Lord, taken from the rivers. No longer will we come out from the rock because it was time to move on to a new level of faith, a new level of maturity. And so, Lord, we pray for the same for each one of us as we walk into this post-COVID time. Whatever the circumstances we face in our work, in our jobs, our businesses, plans that we might have for our families, our own walk as a church, Father, that you inspire us once again with your vision. Burn within us. Lord, the songs that we sing, Lord, that says that you are a way maker, Lord, be that way maker. Open doors that cannot be shut. Ensure, Lord, oppositions will be there. But Lord, we come as people strong and of good courage because Lord, you are with us. And if you are with us, who can stand against us? And so Father, we pray that you stir up our faith once again to believe for more in you and to be a people who choose the long road of obedience to follow you, follow you rightly, effectively, lovingly so that the things you want to do in us, through us, oh Lord, will come to pass for you. And so, Father, I commit each one of us here as a body of Christ. We thank you for great things and good things that you will do in us and through us so that our lives will be a blessing to many who need to know you for such a time as this. We thank you for healing that will happen for those who are sick. We thank you for strength that comes upon those who are weak and strength and good courage for each one of us to go through the different challenges we face in our daily living, knowing, Lord, that you bring forth that breakthrough. We thank you, Lord, Father, for release of provision finances, oh Lord, even jobs, things that you want to release into our lives to position us in places where your light shines through our lives. Father, we commit our lives, our families to you, our connect groups, our church, our ministry. Lord, you take over because you can run in much better than us. Father, whatever I have said that is not of you, put it down. For what is of you, burn a big vision within our hearts. Stir us. We thank you, Father, for that prevail, the Lord that that you open doors for us to be partners with you in your great commission. We thank you, Father, for the good things that you bring and you have done in the past and greater things will happen. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Do come next week to join us for the second chapter of Joshua. Pastor Yuen Wo will be here to share the word to continue on the series. Chapter 2 is another exciting series. If you have not read it, read through it so you get the whole gist of it. Let's just stand right now and let's do the benediction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the background music that we have. <laughs> Father, Lord, 
Now as you go, go in His anointing. Go in His love, His peace, His joy. Be men and women who embrace His promise and live it out so that all, so that the Bible becomes a reality in your life and through your life. So that, O oh Lord, faith burns in your life and stirs you for great things that God has said. Now, in the love of the Father, grace of the Son, and fellowship, the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless all of you. Sunday in Pilot once again. God bless.